Now it's time to understand the graphical representation of cardiac cycle. First let me tell you all that we are going to look in this graph. First one is phonocardiogram. That means here we are looking at the sounds we hear during a heartbeat. Secondly, here we are looking at electrocardiogram, the electrical activity of heart. Then we have the ventricle volume at different stages of cardiac cycle. For this, on x-axis we have timings of different stages of cardiac cycle and on y-axis we have volume in milliliters. And finally, we are going to look at pressure at three different places ventricular pressure, atrial pressure and aortic pressure during various stages of cardiac cycle. Here on x axis we have the same timings of the different stages of cardiac cycle and on y axis we have pressure from 0 to 120 in millimeters of mercury that is mm of Hg. You may wonder why the demarcations on x axis are variant. I mean, why the gap here is small and why the gap here is wider. Well, just now I told you that x axis is marked with the timings of each stage of cardiac cycle. The isovolumetric relaxation is of 0.08 second, so the gap is small. And the duration for rapid inflow or rapid filling is 0.1 second, so the gap is wider than this. And this is the same with other stages. Okay, this is the overview of what we are going to look in this graph. Let's get started now. Here we have the graphical representation of two cardiac cycles. This is one cardiac cycle and this is another cycle. Let's first start with the first stage that is the atrial contraction of atrial systole. The P wave here is formed by the atrial depolarization which causes the contraction of atria. One important thing to remember here is that the electrical events occur slightly before the mechanical events. That's the reason the electrical P wave is formed slightly earlier than the actual mechanical events. Uh, by the mechanical events, I mean the contraction and relaxation of the heart and volume and pressure changes. In atrial contraction, we know that 20% of the blood is added to the ventricles. So, the ventricle volume here is shown as increased. As the atrial contract, the atrial pressure increases and this increased pressure is shown in the form of wave A. As the atrial ventricle wall is open, here the pressure in atria is transferred to ventricles and we get the same pressure wave as a blue colored wave and it is the ventricular pressure. As iota is supplying the blood to other parts of the body, the pressure in it slowly decreases and it is shown here. Then after the P wave, we get QRS complex which represents the depolarization of a ventricle and this depolarization causes ventricular contraction. This small period here, we have actually the same period here which is called as isovolumetric contraction. In this stage, there is no ventricular volume changes so this red line remains constant. And as the ventricles contract, you can see here the significant increase in ventricular pressure. Now, as atria starts collecting blood from the lungs, it gets its pressure increased and that is represented as C wave. At a certain point, we will have an enough pressure in the ventricle to cause the semi lunar valves open. It is the point where we can see that ventricular pressure overcoming the aortic pressure. As we have discussed earlier, it is around 81 mm of Hg. Now, at this stage, the blood in the ventricles is ejected to aorta. Both the rapid ejection phase and slow ejection phase is combinedly given here as ejection phase. In rapid ejection, the ventricular pressure reaches its peak and in slow ejection, the ventricular pressure starts decreasing. As the blood is going into the iota, the pressure in the iota also increases. As the blood is ejected from the ventricle, the ventricular volume decreases significantly. 
the atria here is still receiving the blood and it gives a slightly increased V wave. Now coming to the T wave that is the repolarization of ventricle which causes the relaxation of ventricles. As it is relaxation the ventricular pressure decreases and as the two valves are closed there is no change in the ventricular volume. Due to decrease in the ventricular pressure the atrial ventricular valves open and the ventricular filling takes place. So the ventricular volume here increases both in rapid inflow and diastasis that is slow ventricular filling phase until the SA node triggers again. So the SA node now triggers and the P wave is formed and the cycle continues. Coming to the part we have not yet touched that is phonocardiogram. We already know that a healthy valve do not make any sound when it opens. It makes sound only when it closes. So here we have two stages where the valves close. One is the closure of atrioventricular valve that is bicuspid and tricuspid valve. It is during the isovolumetric contraction. Here we hear the sound lub. Second is closure of semilunar valves. It is during isovolumetric relaxation and here we hear the sound dub. As we have discussed earlier, we have two more abnormal sounds S3 and S4. S3 is heard during rapid inflowing and S4 is heard during atrial systole. So here is this place where S4 is heard which is rare and abnormal. So by this I complete the total cardiac cycle.